All right, everybody's had a busy day, and here we are live on tonight. Uh, we're going to do something a little different tonight. We're going to go ahead and take a break from Leviticus, and we're going to go right into Joshua chapter 3, verse 4. Joshua chapter 3, verse 4. And uh, we give the Lord praises. We have a friend of ours. His name is Brother Tommy, and he had a heart surgery today. Uh, done. They did a lot in there, but he's out doing great. So we give God the glory and the praise for that. So uh, once again, continue to pray for his speedy recovery. All right. All right. So uh, Joshua chapter 3, verse 4. is, And uh, we're going to go back in and just read through this together. And he says, uh, Yet uh, uh, there shall be a space between you and it, about 2,000 cubits by measure. Come not near it, that you may know the way by which you must go. For you have not passed this way heretofore. Okay? So we're going to, if you will, just go ahead and write down on, on your outline, just put verse 4, then skip down to verse 5, then verse 6. These will be your notes. And then go all the way down to verse, when you get to 12, though, it's 12 through 16, and then verse 17. Okay? So you're going to write down, it'll, it'll say Joshua 3, then uh, your next outline would be Joshua five, uh, 3, 5, and then Joshua 3, 6, so on and so on, until you get down to uh, verse 12, and you'll put Joshua uh, 12 through 16, okay? And then the last note will be uh, Joshua uh, verse uh, three, uh, yeah, chapter, chapter three, verse 17. All right. So let's see what the word of God has for us today. So he says here, uh, in, in verse number, uh, uh, four, he says, yet there shall be a space between you and it. Okay. About 2000 cubics. All right. Which is about 4,586 feet. We know. He, and, uh, so he says, uh, come not near unto it, and that ye may know the way by which ye must go. For ye have not passed this way here unto therefore. Verse 5. And Joshua said unto the people, Sanctify yourselves. Now circle that. For tomorrow the Lord will do wonders among you. And Joshua spake unto the priest, saying, Take up the ark of the covenant, and pass over before the people. And they took up the ark of the covenant, and went before the people. And the Lord said unto Joshua, This day will I begin to magnify thee in the sight of all of Israel, that they may know that as I was with Moses, so I will be with thee. And thou shalt command the priests that bear the ark of the covenant, saying, When ye are come to the brink of the, of the water of Jordan, I want you to circle this phrase, ye shall stand still. He says, ye shall stand still where? In Jordan. Okay. And uh, somebody said, well, why is he doing that? Well, I'll give you a little note here. Out beside that, I want you to put down uh, between verses 8 through 10 is uh, uh, he wanted them to know that God was among them. Most people today, uh, Mark, they, they go to church, but they, they're beginning to lose that connection with God. A lot of people are. And to them, it's just something mundane, just something they attend. But sometimes we just need to stand still and look at all the blessings that God is around us and what he's doing for us and name them. Like the old song, count your many blessings, what? Name them one by one, okay? So he says, you shall stand still, he says, in Jordan. And Joshua said unto the children of Israel, out beside verse 9, write the word listen, listen. And Joshua said unto the children of Israel, Come hither and hear the words of the Lord, your God. So sometimes we just need to slow down and uh, loopy and just be still enough to, uh, to listen to what God is doing and what God is saying. We live in crazy times right now and, and everybody's, I think everybody's mad at it. I think they're so mad at everything, they're even mad at themselves, you know? And uh, they, nobody can please them, they can't even please themselves. So we live in, in crazy times today. So what do you do during those crazy times? Well, you, you just got to slow down. You got to stand still. You got to begin to listen to what your heart is saying, what your spirit is saying. 
uh, what the word of God may be trying to teach you. So verse 9 says, And Joshua said unto the children of Israel, Come hither and hear, there it is, hear the words of the Lord your God. And Joshua said, Hereby ye shall know that the living God is among you. Now circle that phrase. Knowing God is among us. But he said, you're going to have to stand still. You're going to have to listen to the word of God so that you'll know that, the, that God is among us, he says, and that he will without fail drive out from before you the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Hivites, the Pezites, the uh, Girgashites, and the Amorites, and the Jebusites. And no, he said, I'm all the things that you consider your enemy, I'm going to take care of it. I'm going to drive them out. And he says, verse 11, Behold, the ark of the covenant of the Lord of the earth passes over, here it is, before you into Jordan. So what, 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 is, what is God teaching us? If we'll stop long enough and listen to God, and we'll begin to listen intently to his words, then God's going to do the leading. Verse 11, you can write that down. God does the leading. So often we ask God to bless what we're doing instead of saying, okay, God, what was it you're doing? And uh, I want to be a part of what you're doing. So God, you lead us. You know, it may be that God is, you're trying to find a job. You're trying to find a home. You're trying to find... You know, whatever it is in your life, uh, you have to slow down. If you don't, you're going to make some big mistakes. So what do we do during crazy times? What do we do when the, see, like the pressure is on? Uh, Tigger, you stand still. But you say, but I, I want to go ahead and walk over to Jordan. I'm ready to go. Stand still. Slow down. Listen. And then he says, and then know, when you know that God is among you and that he promises to take care of all the enemies before you, in verse 11, uh, he says, Behold, the ark of the covenant of the Lord of the earth passes over, underline this, before you into Jordan. We need to see God moving in front of us, not just behind us. And so verse 12 says, Now, now therefore take you 12 men out of the tribe of Israel, out of every man a tribe, okay, or a, a, a tribe of man. And it shall come to pass as soon as the soles of the feet of the priests of the, that bear the ark of the Lord, the Lord of the earth shall rest on the waters of Jordan, that the waters of Jordan shall be cut off from the waters that come down from above, and they shall stand upon a heap. Now, wait a minute. You're talking, you're saying that God's saying that the waters are going to just part and stand straight up so they can cross over. I don't know about you, but sometimes, you know, we, we're all looking for a miracle. But if they hadn't stood still and they hadn't listened to God's word and they tried to go over on their own, they probably wouldn't have made it. But here's the neat thing. When you let God do the leading and you let God get, uh, if he's going to be on the other side and everything, he's going to bring you through whatever you're going through. So Lady Karen, he says, now therefore take 12 men out of the tribe of Israel. He said, out of every tribe of man, a representative of every tribe, and it shall come to pass as soon as the soles of the feet of the priest that bear the what? The ark of the Lord, uh, the Lord of all the earth shall rest on the waters of Jordan, that the waters of Jordan shall be cut off from the waters that come uh, uh, down from above, and they shall stand upon a heap. And it came to pass when the people removed from their tents to pass over Jordan and the priest bearing the Ark of the Covenant before the people, all right, and as soon as they bear the Ark were come into Jordan and the feet of the priests that bear the Ark were dipped, look at this, in the brim of the water for Jordan overfloweth all the banks all the time of harvest. So here's this river that's overflowing and if they tried to cross it, uh, uh, Lady Karen, they probably wouldn't have made it. I mean, it's really, I mean, there's things really against them. And then verse 16, that the waters which came down from above stood and rose up upon a heap very far from the city of Adam, that is beside Zaratan. And those that came down toward the sea of the plain, even the salt sea failed and were cut off and the people passed over 
right against Jericho. And the priests that bear the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord, now circle this, they stood firm. They stood firm on what? On dry ground. On dry ground in the midst of Jordan. And all the Israelites passed over on dry ground until all the people were passed, right, right, circle this, clean, clean over Jordan. So what is our outline for tonight that I think God could give it to us? Even though we're going through times, it seems like everybody, if you're like me, are you as tired of Facebook as I am? And I am. And I, I, tried to, I found a way to turn off my notifications finally. And, and uh, But most of it's just junk. It's on there. And I'm not saying when you post your little baby or, or your little puppy that that's junk. But most everything, people are throwing a fit about this, throwing a fit about that, and and uh, you know they're about politics, about religion, and and everybody, and, and everything's about sexuality, and so I, I if you're like me, I just try not to even get on it. Uh, I might get on it long enough to, and my wife will tell you, I go really fast just looking to see if there's any of you had posted anything, or if there's anything of importance, you know. Well, I like Brother Tommy, you know, having. Uh, 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 his surgery and uh, being able to come through that, that was a miracle right there. They had to do a lot to save his life today, but he still got recovery. And so we, we, we see miracles every day in our life. But when people are trying to look for a miracle, when they should be looking for a God, it changes everything. My wife and I will tell you, she'll tell you, I always say, whatever God wants to lead us, Whatever God wants us to do, that's what I want to do. Because if I do it on my own, I'm going to mess it up. Anybody ever messed it up? Made the wrong decision at the wrong time? Maybe you got you got frustrated, you got scared, and I know that you got a surgery coming up and have no idea when the date's going to be or if it's going to be or what, and they got all these ifs out there. So what do you do? Uh, I'm, I'm so glad that you and Lady Karen got to have some time together today. Had a blast, you know. And uh, so what do you do? You enjoy life. But you're not going to do it unless you learn to stand still. So let me give you the outline. Joshua 3, 4 says, For you've not passed this way before. That's point number one. You know, in my whole entire 37, going on 38 years of pastoring the same church, College Heights Baptist Church, I can tell you I've not passed this way before. There's a lot of things that are happening I don't have answers for. So what are you going to do? Well, here's the answer. Verse 5. Write the word prepare. Look what he says. And Joshua said unto the people, sanctify yourselves, for tomorrow the Lord will do wonders among you. So that word sanctified means to, to uh, prepare yourself, you know, to be set apart so God can use you. So what do you do? Write this out beside verse 5. Prepare, dash, what do you prepare? Your heart, your mind, your body, and your life. Are you following this? He says, you've never gone this way before. You've never had to deal with this. But what do you do? You prepare your heart. And you know, it's uh, a lot of times when we go visit people that are in the hospital, my wife will tell you, I always try to make them laugh. Always try to get their spirits built back up and not try to focus on, oh my God, what if this happens? Well, you know, let's just trust God to get us through whatever we're going through, let his will be done. And, and, uh, and, and if you don't prepare your heart, and that's where you've really calmed it down, and your mind, how many know you get so much stuff going through your mind, it just drives you crazy, mm -hmm. right? But he says, prepare your body. Prepare your body. And so whenever you think about that, it's like, am I taking care of myself? I never thought that Tigger at, at age 65, I, that for the 18 months, I've been dealing with what I'm going through. And then we've got a major surgery coming up. And, and you say, I've never been through this before. I haven't either. So what's going to happen? Don't know. But I, I, I've got hopes and prayers that it's going to work. So what are, you, what are you saying? I'm going to prepare my heart. 
And one of the ways to prepare your heart, hi, Justin, so good to see you. Love you, brother. We're in Joshua uh, chapter three. And point one is, for you've not passed this way before. I don't have all the answers, folks, and neither do you. I wish I did sometimes, but if I had all the answers, I'd probably be scared to death and not do what I need to do, Amen. right? So I'm glad that God says, don't worry about tomorrow. You just take care of today. So take some time out to prepare your heart. Verse five, prepare your heart, your mind, and your body. Take care of yourself. And then what? Your life. Uh, what kind of life are you living right now? Are you living in anger or fear? Or, or are you living life and just really, really... We went, we went ahead and, and watched an old movie called Michael. Anybody ever seen that movie? Mm -hmm. Oh, my gosh. Uh, my wife says it's one of the best movies ever made. And I think she's right. And uh, so this old angel, you know, he's, a, he's done all of his work and everything else. His feathers are starting to fall off. And, and he's never been down that road before. I'm not going to give you all the details because you might want to watch the movie, right? But uh, I encourage you. I mean, and, but one of the things that he said, he was out there in the field and he said, I really love this place. I love, he loved the air. He loved the fragrance. He loved the smells. He just, you know, and, and you'll, you'll pass that up if you don't stand still. Yep. Okay. So let's go back to verse four. Ye shall, there'll be a space between you and it, talking about the Ark of the Covenant, that 2,000 cubits, all right, it's about 3,000 feet, by the way, all right, and we know there's 4,580 feet in a mile, so, you know, you're almost a mile away, and why is that? Because as long as God's out there moving in front of you, you're not going to outrun God. Does that make sense? So, we've not passed this way before. Some of you, you've never had to deal with what you're dealing with right now, but the Bible does have the answer. And verse 5 said what? It said, And Joshua said to the people, Sanctify yourself. Sanctify, out beside that, write the word, you know, to set aside, be prepared. You know, to, why? For the tomorrow, the Lord will do wonders among you. There are some miracles that are coming, but don't look for the miracles, look for the God that's in those miracles. Okay? Verse 6, what do you do? You take action. And Joshua spake unto the priest, saying, Take up the Ark of the Covenant. Out beside that, right? Outside verse 6, right? Take action. And it needs to be the right action. And, and don't let the things that make you angry or mad or frustrated let you miss out on the beautiful things of life. And so Joshua spake unto the people saying, or the priests saying, take up the Ark of the Covenant, pass over before the people. In other words, lead the people. Let God lead the people. And they took up the Ark of the Covenant and went before the people. So verse 5 is what? Well, verse 4, we've never been down this road before. We've never had to deal with this stuff. Verse 5, prepare. What can we prepare? Our heart, our mind, our body, our life. And verse 6 was what? Take action. What about verse 7? What, what is verse 7? Let's read it. And it says, And the Lord said to Joshua, This day, now beside verse 7, write, the blessings begin. When do they begin? This day. This day. He said, this day will I begin to magnify thee in the sight of all Israel, that they may know that as I was with Moses, so I will be with thee. So verse seven, we see that we're to watch for the blessings to begin. And you know, anytime you see a blessing, it's, it, it, you're going to get excited. I, I got a text a while ago that a friend of ours got through, I think it was uh, four bypasses and a valve and his heart was changed out. And they say, he's doing fine. You know what? I just answered, praise God. And uh, whoever was texting us, I didn't know who it was. I think it was his wife. But anyway, uh, they said, amen. That means they're in agreement. But you see, there are some big things we look for. But what else do we have? Well, if you woke up this morning and you were able to see with two eyes, that's a miracle. If you have two lungs to bring with, breathe with, that's a miracle. If you got two feet to walk with, I still stumble over mine, but I, I'm walking. It's a miracle. Somebody said, says, I, I like to see a miracle. Well, I just start dancing in front of you. That's a miracle. Why? Because you're a miracle. You are a miracle. 
Can you imagine if we all just got and somebody said, I want to see a miracle. Well, show them a miracle. Show them that you're breathing, you're jumping up and down, you're laughing, having a good time. Be the miracle, my point. Don't look for one. Be the miracle in somebody's life. Be the one that says, hey, you're going to get through this. You ain't been this way before. But the Bible says in Joshua 3, 4, it says you've not passed this way. Verse 5, you need to prepare some things. And then verse 6, take some action. Take actions that's going to take and that is going to allow you to follow God's direction. Verse 7, watch for the blessings to begin. And then we get to verse 8. I like verse 8. He says uh, in verse 7, it says, I was with Moses, so I will be with thee. Verse 8, and he says, And thou shalt command the priest that bear the ark of the covenant, saying, When ye are come to the brink of the water of Jordan, circle this, ye shall stand still in Jordan. We're talking about the Jordan River here. So when you go back and look at verse 8, I want you to do this. Write this down. Take charge of your life in following God. Take charge. Don't wait for somebody to ask you to read the Bible. You read the Bible. Don't ask, wait for somebody to say, hey, why don't you go to church and encourage some people? Don't, don't wait. Be, you, you take the action. You know, don't blame the world. Blame yourself if you're going to do that. But don't blame yourself. Just take action. So prepare your heart. Take action. Verse 6, verse 7. Watch for the... And listen, if you'll do this, you'll start to see the blessings. The ble I went outside and we have a bush out in the backyard and, and that thing is normally ugly all year long. But man, that thing blossomed the other day. It only blossomed so many year, times a year. I mean, so many years. And uh, I went out there and trimmed them all off and gave them to my wife. And boy, she got excited and put them in a bowl. And man, those things are beautiful. Now, if they, if they fall off and you step on them, uh, they're going to leave a stain. So those flowers today are dead. They're dead. So I'm not going to sit there and look at some dead flowers. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to find something else that's going to be a blessing. I'm going to try to bless my wife in different ways. She's always trying to bless me. And 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 so why not? Why not get back to saying I'm going to be a blessing? I'm not just going to be a miracle. I'm going to be a blessing to somebody. So take charge of your life in following God. Verse 8. How about verse number 9? I like verse number nine. And Joshua said to the children of Israel, come hither, look at this, and hear the words of the Lord your God. So what do we do when we're going through things we don't know? Here's what you do. You continue to listen to God daily. Daily listen to God. Don't, don't ever skip a day of reading your Bible. Why? Because you won't, you won't be able to hear what God's trying to do. I've I've gone back in and sometimes when I'm getting ready for a sermon, I, I open my Bible and, and right there it just stands out at me. And uh, uh, tonight, we God changed the direction of where we were going in our study. And so apparently this was needed. And so I listened. And so here we are. You've not passed this way. Turn to your neighbor and said, I've never done this before. I ain't done this. Never been here before. You know, what are you going to do? I'm going to prepare my heart, prepare my mind and and my body, and my life. And then I'm going to take some action. Verse 6 and verse 7, I'm going to watch the blessings to begin. You know, if you've got children and they walk in the door and they're smiling, they say, hi, Dad, or hi, Pops, or whatever. Some people don't have that. And so instead of complaining, why don't you praise God that you've got that love coming to you and that you get to do that. I see people all the time. I love what's when I do go on Facebook, I look for families that are posting pictures of their family. And what do we do? Hi, Nancy. Good to see you. We're in Joshua chapter 3. And um, I like to capture those pictures and send cards in the mail to people. And you know what's fun is I've done this. We've now sent over 7,000 cards in the last few years. 7,000. And um, think about it. That's a lot of cards, isn't it? A lot of cards. But we can go to people's houses, and Lady Karen, is it not true? We get over there, and uh, we was over at Glenn and them the other day, and man, all the cards we sent, they said, boy, we sure appreciate this. And they're all lined on their piano. We got another lady named Suzanne, good friend of ours, and the cards we send are all over their house. Uh, there are people in town that are bankers and things like that that we happen to bump into and meet maybe once, 
and uh, went back in and took a picture of them and sent to them. And maybe they're kids. Maybe there was a dog. And if we go back in there, guess what, what's on that counter? A card. And he said, why is that important? Well, you have to understand, you need to continue to listen to God. So whenever we call it a prompting, if all of a sudden my wife gets to, uh, she was thinking about you, Loopy, the other day, and then uh, uh, she didn't get a chance to call, so she thought about you the next day, and I thought about you. So you know what happens when we get promptings like that? So get the phone, let's call. Why? Because you never know. Does that make sense? You never know what tomorrow is going to hold. And if God, if you'll listen to God and say, God, I'm listening, who do I need to call and encourage? Not discourage. Who can I encourage? There's enough hate out there in the world. I, I don't like it, do you? I like to be around positive people that, that says, you know, I've never been, had to deal with this. But and they start to look to God and let God do the leading. And all of a sudden, they start to see the blessings. And, and then they continue to listen to God every day. Even though you may not hear God today, but somewhere down the line, God's going to speak to you in his own way. He's going to give you what's called a heartfelt prompting. And so when you uh, think of somebody, uh, yeah, I know the other day that, that uh, Tigger, you had some things on Facebook. And we sent you some cards and, and others. My wife, she got a card today. you got to see that card. It's funny. Oh, my gosh. It's funny. My wife is an esthetician, and, and uh, she would put this mask on her face, and she was in the bathroom. So I ran in there and grabbed my phone. Why? That's a prompting from God. <laughs> okay so I took a couple of pictures and put it on uh, and I sent it to her as a card and we get to the house guess what's on our table right now that crazy picture and we've laughed over it so what What do you do well let's go back and finish this up Joshua 3 4 you have not passed this way before verse 5 so what do you do you prepare your heart your mind body and life verse 6 you take action verse 7 you watch for the blessings to begin and then verse 8, you, you take charge of your life in following God. And in verse 9, you continue to listen to God daily. Now look at verse 10. All right? I want you to write the word results. Lord, I want to know that, that you're in the direction that I'm going. And look for the results. You will know God is among you. So write that down. Results dash, you will know God is among you. So verse 10, if we read that again, it says, And Joshua said, Hereby ye shall know the living God is among you, and that you, he will without fail drive out from you before you the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Havites, Perizzites, and the Girgashites, and the Amorites, and the Jebusites. And in other words, all the things that you see as an enemy, God's going to take care of that. God's going to drive it out. It may not be in one day. But let me ask you this. How many of you have ever been through a situation in your life? You say, I don't know how I'm, I'm going to get through this. Maybe you went through a horrible divorce. You say, I don't have, but you know, look today. Ta-da, here you are. You made it. Isn't that true? Maybe you've been through really bad things in your life. And you say, boy, I can think back in that a couple of years ago. Well, ta-da, <laughs> you made it. How many would agree that, that, that instead of looking back, we can say, wow, and if you do look back, look where you are now. Look what God has brought you and what God has given you. Look for the blessings in your life. And so uh, out beside verse 9, write Proverbs 3, 5 through 6. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5 through 6. This is my living verses that I live by. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5 says, Trust in the Lord with what? All of thy heart. And lean not unto thine own understanding. Verse 6. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. Did you get that? So we understand that we're going to continue to, to listen to God for those promptings in our heart. And, uh, and then verse 10, we're going to look for the results to say, wow, God's, God was in this. How many times, Lady Karen, have we had a prompting and we call somebody up and then we say, you know, God was in this call. You know, God was in us going to see them. And uh, why? Just listen. And verse 11, uh, write the word results again. 
Verse 10 is, you will know God's among you. Verse 11 is, results is, you see God moving before you. Verse 11, behold, the ark of the covenant of the Lord of the earth passes over before you into Jordan. How many know if you're going to a place you've never been before, that it'd be nice to know that God's already there? God's already working on everything. And so we look for results in verse 10. We look for results in verse 11. Verse 10, we look for the results that you'll know God's among you. And then verse 11, you'll see God moving before you. You'll see God opening the doors that need to be opened. And then verses 12 through 16 that we read, let me just give it to you. Choose men who will obey God. I'm going to slow down here. Choose men who will obey God, here it is, so that the blessings can be seen and a way to pass over can be made. Let me say it again. Choose men who will obey God so that the blessings can be seen and a way to pass over can be made. We read that in verse 12. Let's read, let's read it again. Now, wherefore, take ye 12 men out of the tribes of Israel, out of every tribe a man. We need, some, we, we need a man. Today, we need uh, some men that are going to be men and, and not babies. And and uh, and I, I'm not trying to make anybody mad, but but listen, we, you know, most of the time when I look at a leader, they're dressed in a nice suit or, I mean, they, they look like a CEO, they're leaders, or they're maybe they're uh, out there in the front. Uh, we watched that movie, Gabriel, and uh, I mean, Michael, and uh, and it's funny because he's, I mean, I, I never thought I'd see an angel do what he does, and they asked him, and said, I didn't know angels did that. And he said, I'm not that kind of angel. You see, there's a lot of people who have high expectations of you that maybe uh, it's keeping you from enjoying life. They're expecting things out of you. So what do you do? We talked about that. You stand still and you prepare your heart. You take action. You take charge of your life. You, you're watching for the blessings and you continue to listen to God uh, that's among you and you see God moving before you. And then verse 12, it says, choose what? Choose men who will obey God. You see, you need to handpick some men some leaders in your life. Men that you can follow. Men that you can trust. Boy, nowadays, we don't know of anybody that's doing the right leading or anybody we can trust, do we? Amen. That's hard, isn't it? So what we do, we're going to let God hand. He said, I want you to pick them. So maybe your circle of friends. Some of you had friends that would die for you. And you probably died for them, you know. And whatever reason... You know, they may not here be here anymore. So what do you do? We still need to choose some leaders in our life. He said, I want you to choose a man from every tribe, a man. Not a boy, not someone that's going to throw a tinter tantrum, but a man. A man who can take charge and lead people. Maybe some of us, it's time for us to, you ever heard the phrase, it's time to man up. I think we need, I need to man up. You need to man up, right? We need to be men and take responsibility. And so verse 12 says, verse 13, it says, and it shall come to pass as soon as the soles of the feet of the priests that bear the ark of the Lord, the Lord of all the earth shall rest on the waters of Jordan, that the waters of Jordan shall be cut off from the waters that come down from above and they shall stand upon a heap. You see, you need to let God do things that you can't do. God, I can't part the waters, but you can. God, I don't know where we're going, but you you do. And Lord, you know my broken heart. You know that, you know, deep down inside, maybe the anger, the bitterness or whatever. But Lord, I, I've never been in this spot before, but you know what? I know you're going to take care of this. Maybe some of our enemies is not the Canaanites and the high tides. Maybe, maybe it's, it's, it's a past memory. Maybe it's anger. Maybe it's frustration. Maybe it's bitterness. You know, we've all, uh, like Lady Karen, you and I were talking, everybody's been through something, you know, but we're not going through it now. And people want to blame their mom, their dad. They want to blame, uh, their, you know, the puppy and, and the poodle. And, 
you know, oh, come on. It's time to man up. It's time to go out there and be a man. And I won't get into all that, but uh, but but maybe maybe you need to look in the mirror and, and just ask yourself, am I... Am I being a, a, a godly man? Because he says in, if, among the tribes of Israel, pick one. Maybe it's time we, we pick the right people in our life. We try to follow the right people in our life. And it doesn't have to be somebody famous on TV. It could be you. Do you know that, Luffy? Could be. And Mark, it could be you. You know? And Tigger and Lady Karen and and Justin and Nancy, hmm. it, listen, God's going to use you. It might be that God's going to use you to lead your children in the right direction. Does that make sense? Now, I can't be responsible for the decisions that my children make. Neither can you. But I can be responsible to be the man that a children, our children look up to and see. Okay? So... And for some of you, you've taken that. You, you've taken that step. You're, you're manning up and you're taking care of things that need to be taken care of. And I praise God for that. But so we need to look for the results. You'll know that God's among you. Verse 11, you'll see God moving for you. And then verses 12 through 16, choose men who obey God so that the blessings can be seen. And, and what else? A way to pass over. We need some good leadership today. Right now, our world's in a mess. And the average Christian doesn't even pray and ask God, God, we're in a mess. We need leaders. Leaders that can man up and, and show us a way, a way to get, to get back to where you want us to be. Verse 17, as we close this down, I want you to write this down. Uh, it, let's read it and then we'll write it down. Okay, verse 17. And he says, And the priests that bear the ark of the covenant of the Lord What'd they do? They stood firm. And where'd they stand? On a miracle. What? On dry ground in where? The midst of Jordan. You know, we said that Jordan was overflowing. Not only did the water stand up, but Lady Karen, it was completely dry. Isn't that amazing? Who was expecting that? But because they're following the leadership of God and the leadership of godly men, hi, D, it's so good to see you. We're in Joshua chapter 3. And God bless you, hon. And, uh, but you have to understand, if you'll just wait and follow God and do what you're supposed to, man, God's going to show you some things in the, in the days to come, the weeks to come, the months, the years to come. You're going to see God doing things that's going to blow your mind. I mean, if you go back and read the book of Revelation, people say, oh, I'm scared of Revelation. Oh, my gosh. Don't be a sissy. Be a Christian. It's exciting that we are that generation. We're the generation that all the preachers in the past talked about that would be, what? Preparing for the rapture. Preparing for the tribulation. But we got to prepare our hearts. Got to prepare our minds, our bodies, right? So he says, stand firm on dry ground in the midst of Jordan. And all of Israel passed over, right? Circle that. Everybody passed over on dry ground until all the people were what? Passed clean over Jordan. So clean over to the other side. There's going to come a day that uh, Lady Karen, I'm, I'm going to draw my last breath. But God's going to get me clean over to the other side. We've had family members, uh, friends who lit recently went to be with the Lord. And I always tell people when I'm reading the obituary at the funeral that uh, they graduated to be with the Lord Jesus Christ. It's a graduation. It's something to look forward to. And if you think about that, what do you do? Verse 17, you stand your ground with God so that you can pass clean over. Clean over. Some of that word clean. I think today we need some clean hearts, some clean thoughts, some clean actions today. And I think that we need to, well, I don't know about you, but my wife says I'm going to start eating a cleaner diet. I don't know what that means, but I'm scared. She said something about Mediterranean. 
She says nothing about Mexico. Mm -hmm. She didn't say nothing, you know, about tortillas and all that stuff. She's clean. Well, why? Well, because I, I need all the help I can get to get my body back where it needs to be. But a clean what? A clean life. So verse 5 was a, a clean heart, right? A clean mind, a clean body, and a clean life. Y'all think that's a that's a, a formula for success? How about getting rid of the stress in your life? The anxiety in your life? Slow down. Sometimes we overthink what's gonna might happen. Just put it in God's hands. I have no idea what tomorrow's gonna do. I have no idea what the politicians are gonna do. I had no idea that, that we'd be having to, you know, sell our building. I, I never never thought that would ever happen. But what do you do? We go on with ministry. I'm over here preaching at, at the Megaron building. So what are you doing? I showed up. And I'm letting God try to keep my mind clean, my heart clean. And of course, my wife, he, he put her in charge of my body, getting it clean. And, and uh, But what about my life? You know, most of us don't even have a life. You know, you, all you do is you work. That's all you do. Where's your life? She said the other day, and I, I do listen. See, you just don't know it. You know, she's rolling her eyes at me right now. But but she's right. We want a place where, where we can go fishing, take a day off, enjoy life. There's things we can't control. Would you all agree with that? Amen. Well, they don't try to control it. Give it to God. Do what you can. Jesus did everything he could during the day, and he laid down and went to sleep. Even when he was in a storm and in a boat, guess what he found him? Laying down at the bottom of the boat. They woke him up. Can you imagine? He said, look, you know, if you had God with you, hello, God's in the bottom of the boat. And the storm was out raging, and oh my gosh. So Jesus stood up and said, peace be still. And the waves calmed down. And they made it clean over to the other side. Don't you want God to just give you some peace while you're on your journey to the other side? Mark, I know you like to take pictures and color them. And you say it makes you feel peaceful, doesn't it? So what are, what's something you could do? I know you you got these little Scotty Terriers. Man, those things are crazy. But they, they give you joy, don't they? Yeah, and uh, Lady Karen, she's uh, one of those, she's an esthetician, so she likes doing all this crazy stuff uh, to your face. And we came up here the other day and she said, I want to try this out. And I said, what? She said, give me your arm. <laughs> I said, what? So I gave her my arm. She put a bunch of wax on it. Look, she ripped all the wax. I mean, all the hairs are gone. And I'm going, she said, how'd that feel? I said, it felt like you're ripping the hair out of my arm. She's over with a grin on her face. You love doing that, don't you? She does. What is it you love to do if money was not the option and you could just take time, maybe once a week? Yeah, you know, that's why the Bible uses the word rest. That means to celebrate. God rested on the seventh day. Why don't you, where do you, when do you ever take time to rest? Well, we are now. And uh, we're learning how to do it. It's, it's, I've never had to do that before. But I'm learning to do it now. But what are you going to do? I'm going to stand my ground. I'm going to stand my ground with God. Okay? So that you can pass clean over to the other side. And then when I get there, listen. Give God the victory. There are little miracles happening in front of us every day. Many times I'll, as I pray, I say, God... And my wife will tell you, I pray this way. Father, thank you for the gift of just being alive. I've had 65 years now. I've been through a lot. I get to see a lot of things. There's still a lot of things I want to see. Thank you for life. But then I pause for a moment. And I say, Lord Jesus, I want to thank you. It just blows my mind what you did on the cross. There was a picture the other day that uh, Mark had showed the picture of Jesus totally lacerated all over the front. Then it showed a picture of his back and it's stuck in my memory. 
to where the flesh is completely ripped away and all you see is the is the ribs in the in his back that's probably one of the best pictures to portray a little bit what Christ went through and I can't get that out of my mind. So when I think about thanking him for what he did on Calvary, and for the salvation he gave me, which is eternal life, I thank God the Father for life. I thank the Lord Jesus Christ for eternal life. And I don't say that just to be saying it. I see those two pictures in my mind and realize, oh, what a price he paid on that cross. And then he took my sin and your sin on himself. It just blows me away. And then when the thief on the cross said, hey, I'm guilty, he looked to Jesus and said, would you remember me? And Jesus is saying what? Today, here's what he's saying. Today, I'm going to take you clean over to the other side. Today, you'll be with me in paradise. And so I pause and I think about that. Father, thank you for the gift of life, and I'm just overwhelmed. I made a lot of mistakes along the way, but I'm learning. I really think down here is kind of a training ground. Taking these uh, 65 years to try to get a lot of things corrected. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for the gift of everlasting life. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for empowering my life. By that I mean... I, every day, those promptings to either get something right or to do what is right. Lord, I, I just thank the Holy Spirit. He, he's, he's put up with me a lot. He's had to get me out of a lot of messes and get my mind straight, my heart straight, and, and I got my body straight, and now I'm working on getting my life straight. Verse 5 just keeps jumping out, doesn't it? Prepare. The Bible says that when Jesus comes, we're the bride. You need to prepare for the coming of Jesus Christ. And our robes need to be white and pure. Our lives need to be clean because the King of Kings is coming. First Thessalonians chapter four talks about the, what you and I refer to as the rapture. And the word rapture doesn't appear in the Bible, but he says there'll be a quick drawing away. And then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up with them in the clouds. Jesus could come tonight are you ready? Are you prepared? Have you truly repented? <coughs> Jesus said, except you repent. Have you repented? <coughs> Have you repented and asked Jesus into your heart? Why not do that now? Like the thief on the cross. I'll even help you with a prayer. My prayer won't save you, but if you mean it with you, with the intent to Jesus, he'll do the saving. It might be something like this. Dear Lord Jesus, I'm a sinner. I'm guilty, but I'm asking you, Lord Jesus, who took my sins on himself. Died, but on the third day arose. So Lord Jesus, I'm guilty, I'm looking to you as my Savior that's alive, please remember me. Help me. Save me. I give you thanks. And Jesus would reply to you from the Word of God today. In other words, our salvation is sealed today. Why not ask him, Lord, save me right now, please? And then thank him, just trust him. Thank you, Lord, for saving me. Thank you for giving me a home in St. In John chapter 14, verses 1 through 6. You've prepared a place just for me. Now, Holy Spirit, now that you're inside of me, help me to think right, speak right, live right, love right, forgive right, and just do the right things. Help me to do good that I might show people a God that loves them. Love you, Lord Jesus. Thank you. Amen. It's just a prayer. 
It's just asking God. But there's repentance in there. Are you ready to let God change your life? I pray you are. Thank you for joining us, and I hope you enjoyed Joshua chapter 3. And go back and look at those points in there. It's a guide. It's a guideline for you and I. And let God just change some things and let it be a blessing. And we'll see you on Sunday. God bless you all. Visit our website at lyitl.org. And yes, Justin, I see the wave. Nancy, the wave. D, I see the wave. God bless you all. Love y'all.